This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, this is Mono Red. We play Mono Red, Mono Red, Mono Red, but it's an it's a twist on Mono Red. I mean, hopefully our sword will still still be lit from time to time, but. When you're playing Lutri the Spell Chaser as your mono red companion, each non land card in your starting deck has to have a different name. So we are playing mono red brawl in standard. One of the quirky things about Lutri is you can play another Lutri in your mono in your mono red deck, in your deck, one as your companion, one within the deck. That is a thing you can do. Not sure if it's a good thing you can do, but it's something I'm going to give a try to. Filling out the mono red deck does involve a few cards that wouldn't normally see play. This Careless Celebrant is kind of at the top of the list. But overall, there are a number of good red cards, so the power level of the deck isn't completely terrible. The main problem with it is there are a lot of situational cards. So I've got Scorching Dragonfire and Lava Coil in my deck, and they take away from the aggression of the deck. Do you want to draw this when you already have creatures on the field and you're trying to attack and your opponent spent their turn playing a big creature? Absolutely. Do you want to have this in your opening hand when you don't have a one drop or a two drop? Your first creature is say a three drop and then there's a four drop and a five drop and two removal spells. That's not a great opening hand. So you end up mulliganing more frequently. Risk factor is on the box because I never get to play this card hardly ever anymore, but it makes a little return to this deck. If I'm going to mono red, let's do it and make it a real challenge. I challenge all of you mono red gamers out there. See if you can get as many wins as I get in a standard event, which I'm about to enter, and uh, see if you can do as well as I do with a Lutri Singleton mono red deck. Am I saying it's competitive? Absolutely not. But hopefully you enjoy this brief diversion into a sort of fun companion challenge. I can feel the standard meta getting obnoxious. There's only so many Zenith Flares and Agents of Treachery I can play against before I need a little break. I can feel it. If you feel it too, and you're in the Cool Kids Club who watches my intros, let me know in the comments. Can you, like, is standard already stale for you? Or is it just getting there? Or are you having fun? I would love to hear from you. But whenever it gets stale for me, I like to find ways to challenge myself. And one thing I love about the companions is they create deck building restrictions. So it's going to be a fun way to challenge myself to pass time in this format when the meta gets stale and the ladder gets lame to do companion challenges such as Lutri here. So let's dive in. Let the elemental otter nonsense begin. This is mono red. We play mono red, mono red, mono red. And it looks like we're in the mirror, which makes having a removal spell better. And possibly a resilient threat like Phoenix becomes better too. So being a little slower and a little bigger might be the way to be. Robber. Okay, let's get in there. Stole a nothing. Hype. I hope you needed that land. It would be nice to save the Scorching Dragonfire to go with the Lutri, but we have to get to five mana for that. Might be difficult. Oh boy. They've got Cat Oven, everybody. Will I be able to exile this kitty? We'll need them to take the shields down pretty badly for that to work. Not only that, I would have to take a lot of time off to sit on the dragon fire. I have four cards in hand, too. I might not be able to get under that. Just in case they don't know they are the one holding the priority. Alright. Well, <laughs> the card we get to run multiples of. Castle Emrith. No point in attacking. The opponent can do the cat oven loop. The real question is whether or not we hold Scorching Dragonfire. And I don't think we do. I think we do need to save it for the right moment. So let's get the bird in there, do some aerial damage. If the opponent has Mayhem Devil, the game is kind of over. So let's just make them curve into Mayhem Devil. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wonder if we shouldn't have. Like, should we just be holding up Scorching Dragonfire for the Mayhem Devil here? But it looks like the opponent doesn't have it. Or I don't think we would see that play. Fervent Champion. Okay. Double Oven. We're crying out loud, everybody. Do we have to do this? Do we have to be the Cat Oven? Do we have to play like this? And do we have to rope at the uh, in the second main every time? The burning questions that I have. Hello. Well, let's get that going, shall we? Just see if we can overpower our opponent. We need them to miss another land drop, I think. No blocks at all? That seems suspicious, but okay. Let's put it on the flyer. Next turn, Lutri can double the Infuriates. Should be more than enough, no matter what they do with this cat. The real question is, if they have Mayhem Devil and the land for it, they can pretty much wipe our board. Unless they decide to try to time it at some crazy instant speed and we get to blow them out with Infuriate. Fourth oven third oven but that's good enough <laughs> so that land that we exiled on turn two with robber of the rich <laughs> apparently they needed it well we're on the draw as we've been as we tend to do sometimes the bone crusher giant is pretty good so we'll hang on to it just based on the the strength of the bone crusher giant and the being up two cards on our opponent, although they have a Lurus. Oh, they've got a Fox. I guess Bone Crusher Giant's not good enough. If they double cycle here, it's all over. Unless we top deck Lava Coil or Scorching Dragonfire. All they have to do is double cycle. Can they do it? Huh. Interesting. And they go for a stinger. They do not double cycle. I am amazed, and I will take it. One less fox in the world. Yeah, we are decisively on the back foot, though. Zenith Flare, anyone? Ever heard of it? Don't think I can beat that card. <laughs> but maybe Legion Warboss can help. Let's see if the opponent plays another 2-2 or not. If they don't, things might be good. Okay. Let's get the Warboss going. I think that's better than trying to skewer this, because I might be able to set up a Lutri on the skewer. Uh-huh. Just cycle, dude. Just cycle. Why do people wait? Another fox, huh? And away we go. Yeah, it feels like on the draw against these against this deck, you just have no chance if they have a turn one fox. They're using go for blood though to trade here. That that shows a little bit of respect and possibly fear. Hmm. Very tempting to attack and see if the opponent's willing to block. They might just not. If they don't, we have skewer, but maybe that's too much. Probably safer to go with the lava coil because we know this must die. Uh 
All right, get some damage. We have to force them to use a flare on our creature. It's like our best chance. So they go grindy. They got the stinger. So we have to go activate this. Sneak underneath them. So that now we have skewer ready, but let's also light up the stage. See what we see. Dragon fire. I guess that's better. Dragon fire the Lurus. So the lifelink does not happen. They're doing the thing. Mm. They're up to six cards with cycling in the graveyard. I'm at 13 life. They play a healer. Also annoying. So is it worth a block? I'm really close to dead. But if I'm giving up my creatures, can I actually win? I have to get some damage through and copy the skewer. So no, I just have to take it. I don't have a choice, I don't think. All right, the fact that that's stuck means they probably are on land Zenith Flare with seven in the graveyard. This takes it to nine and I'm at 10. So I'm likely dead next turn. Feels really bad, but that's the way it is. So Lutri here can copy skewer the critics if we get, yeah. So I don't want either of these to get blocked. The opponent might not block them, but it's not worth it, I don't think, because we need all of our resources. We're going to somehow win this with Torbrand next turn. So I need them to brick, I guess, draw land. If their hand is land Zenith Flare or just don't have the Flare, but I think they do. Okay, they're still playing creatures. That's a good sign, that's a good sign. Slaying fire. Oof. So close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's not lethal. And the opponent has enough cycling now that Zenith Flare is. So I can't play around it any longer. If they have it, they have it, and I lose. If they don't have it, I might be able to steal this next turn. Hold on to your butts. Why? Ah. Uh. God, that makes me sad. Every time. Hey, I go first this game. Nice. We're probably against cycling again. I see Lurus over there. Being on the play last game, we would have won. I'm 100% certain, so... One other shot at him, but nope, it's not cycling. Not this time. Alright, let's get a Steamkin on the board. Our hand is pretty good for a singleton deck. That's what I've got going for me. I'm showing double black over here and an attack and nothing else. Nice. So let's drop the Ember Hauler. Hopefully we can copy the Scorching Dragon Fire at some point. The bearded one is on deck. That might make a huge difference in this game. Opponent draws an Evolving Wilds. More sacrifice lands for Mayhem Devil. 
potentially. There's Grasp. Can't do anything about it. That is a dead Steamkin. And Lurus, of course, can bring Myers Grasp back. So it's a good combination of cards if we let that if we let it get to that point. They need five mana to do it. Hopefully by then Lutri and Scorching Dragonfire shut them down. Really? I mean, they want the life. I will, like, get this off the board. Like, because I get the life right back by attacking, so wouldn't blocking there, if that's the plan, be better? We'll see. Flame. Okay. You can sacrifice it to deal two damage. Interesting technique. <laughs> to steal from, I think, a Narset quote. Let's go ahead and hold up the Lutri Dragonfire. I have a feeling I'll get to use it. Although the flood is getting scary. I don't think we've don't think we've drawn a spell this game. It's starting to alarm me. Alright, I'm sure they're going to play something else. So we'll get to double dragon. Don't kill this though, please. Sure. I should just have this card in my deck along with uh, some blood crypt. <laughs> It's probably better than something I'm playing. Probably. What am I talking about? This deck is a well-honed machine. It doesn't need no help. Blue tree. Help them die. That's what you get for having two of the same card in your deck. Heathen. Pump it. Get there. Down to one. And I've got a spitta. Will we get it the job done? It looks like we will. <laughs> Urban Champion, Banneret, Slaying Fire, Act of Treason. I don't know if this is good, but it's got a one drop on one. I'm gonna do I'm gonna try it. Saddle up and ride. I think it's better to just get in with the Fervent Champion. The first strike means it's likely to get in next turn, too. The Banneret can join it in combat, probably around turn three. Oh, let me guess. Cycling? <laughs> Ooh, pro-white. I like it. No cycling. What is going on here? Okay. We are cycling. We just aren't cycling right now. Land off the top for this frickin' fox, please. Thank you. Well, we could also let the opponent build up this fox and steal it. Um... Hmm. Is that the play? If I attack with this, will the opponent actually block it, do you think? This one has to attack, but they can't block it. Oh, whatever. They'll have another fox. Just get that thing dead. Kill the thing, attack the opponent. That is how you mono red. This is mono red. We play mono red. Mono red. Mono red. Let's go mono red. Okay, they're a little low on mana. We have some nerds to play. This can be fine. Three more for your face. Celebrant. Banneret. Do they stay mana screwed? 
Don't think I've ever seen a cycling deck stay mana screwed. But then again, they didn't cycle a card on turn one or turn two. So at this point, I'm starting to think it might be new to the cycling game. Okay, they did cycle go for blood. What? Whatever. Just forget I said anything. Forget I said words. It's fine. All right, Stinger can block the Berserker. Act of Treason can just straight steal something, though. They're at 11. I still think we hold on to the Act of Treason. Let's play this. Let's pump here. Let's use it to pump the Fervent Champion. Make it basically unblockable. They also want to block the Banneret, or they take 5. So they want to go like here, here, and then they still take four. And their next creature gets stolen. Seems good. This is mono red. Mono red, mono red. And once more in, we have a winning record. Screenshot it, lock it up. Don't let anybody tell me different. Man, no early creatures. This hand was almost good, but it has no early creatures, and we're against Karuga, which is probably Fires. And Fires is too good to not keep early early threats against. And here we go. We got Robber and Banneret. It's not absolutely nothing. We can play Banneret into Robber, into Pump Banneret, Pump Robber, get Deafening Clarion, and then try to go from there. We could also hold back Robber of the Rich and play Celebrant instead, but it's much better if they have something worth uh, using the Celebrant on so that its dies ability is good and it's not just another 2-1. Yeah, I think we start with Robber here, but we'll see. Please just don't, just one time, one time, no Deafening Clarion. They didn't have Sphinx to stack their deck. So, yeah. They're not gonna make me discard. So I may as well hide the castle till the last possible moment and get these good punches in. They scry to the top, right? So they needed that land. All right, good. Let's mana screw them. Good, fun, clean magic. It's a tap land. Yes. Bump it. Attack. Mentor. Steal your Teferi, which I'm sure we'll never get to actually cast. Down to 11. Now, if they don't have Clarion right here, we could put them in a tough spot. Making this robber a 4-4 is no joke. Casting their Teferi seems fun, but it usually doesn't help us against them very much. Oh my goodness. But do they have Bonecrusher Giant, right? That's the new question. Let's just head upstairs with the shock. Be super mana efficient. So I do like the idea of pumping the banner right here, but I'm too afraid of Bone Crusher Giant, so I don't think it's worth it. Darn it. I was hoping for better than a land there. Am I playing Teferi? They could still have... Hmm. They could still have Clarion, in which case I'm better off playing Lutri and getting him for three after this damage. So deal four, then play Lutri. That's three more, and then a Shock should be lethal. I could also just play Teferi. Raisin Borrower. Ooh, I get to punch them very hard now. Okay. Now they fall to four. And I have a Robber on deck. So, let's see what happens. We've got a shot at him. It's a very real shot. We've got a lot of burn spells to try to draw. But, you know, this is fires. They don't give you a big window to do this stuff. So I can play this, pump this. Attack with both. 
The opponent has to block this one, and it's a trade. That's pretty good. And they fall to one. Too bad I can't sneak out the Teferi first. Oh, it's not a trade anymore, is it? Not anymore. I still think it's worth it. Let's put them in range of any burn spell I happen to pull out of my butt. Block the Banneret, not the Robber. That means I might get to use the Teferi next turn. They're on one life. Deafening Clarion is a card, but they haven't had it yet. Fires on the Edge of Glory against Lutri Singleton Mono Red. You know all the burn spells are in there, you just don't know which ones they will actually draw. That's how I feel. I'm just... What do you got? The furry. That's not great. Risk factor. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, hmm. I could just hit their Bone Crusher Giant and kill them with it. <laughs> right? Surely that's what's on top of their deck. Uh, yeah, it would just be running this into nothing. That's not great. Let's risk factor. Let's do it. Make your choice. I have not resolved a risk factor in a while. How's that draw three feel? Feels not quite lethal, unfortunately. So I think we play the Careless Celebrant, because if the opponent kills it, I get to take out their Teferi. And then we have Lava Coil in the bank to try to get us through next turn, through whatever defenses they come up with. I guess this means the opponent has Mystical Dispute. No other card would hold priority with one mana, unless they have a Cycling card. So we have at least two haste creatures next turn. A lava coil to remove a blocker. And Lutri, the great spell chaser, trying desperately to figure out how to do anything. <laughs> Just trying to make a difference. It's my eighth card, but god, it's always the worst one. Kenrith, oh god. Unfortunately for the opponent, without Fires of Invention, they will now die. So, here's a Fervent Champion. Here's a Robber of the Rich. Here is a Lava Coil for good measure. And we finish the job. This is Mono Red. We play Mono Red, Mono Red, attack face, till they're dead. Mono red, mono red. Not the salty rope. No. Not the salty rope. Not like this, everybody. Is this what it's come to? Careless, celebrant, fervent, champion, castle, ember breath, mountain, 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 robber of the rich. Steal your stuff. Has reach. Why? Cause no one knows. Tibble, Rackish, Instigator, Rim, Rock, Nizzle, Chandra, Fire, Shizzle. This is Mono Red, Lutri, Mono Red. Getting roped for playing Mono Red, Mono Red. Is it is it worse when it's when they know it's a Singleton deck? Is it worse when your top tier fires deck loses to Singleton Mono Red? I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing it is, in fact, worse. I'm guessing it feels terrible. I wouldn't know. I don't know how to lose to a Singleton Mono Red. Or do I? Edge of Glory. Three wins, two losses. Can we get four wins on a Lutri deck? I like the challenge. I think it's a, a significant challenge. 
I accept it. Sure. On the draw, though. Why did we... Why does this have to keep happening? Why do we have to be ever on the draw? Can't we just go first? If I'm playing Lutri, I should be on the play automatically. Like, I, I accepted probably the hardest requirement in Standard. I should get to be on the play every game. But instead, I've been on the... I've, I think I've only been on the play once. You guys will check the records. You'll tell me I'm wrong. All right, Risk Factor. You're going to have to work from the graveyard. It is not too bad of a thing to see the opponent play a Croxa there, because that doesn't affect the board. At least it's not a blocker that's in our way. Butcher. Do they attack? They do. Wow. Gutsy. Is it an oven? Oh my god. Well, that's annoying, but at least they're attacking, not blocking. We just gotta try to smash the damage in. There's nothing else to be done here. If I were the opponent, I would not have attacked with that Butcher, but we'll see. Might work out just fine. Let's see if they have a good way to sacrifice it here. Just play the Lurus. Just play the squad? Sure. The shock for the Lurus is pretty nice. Unfortunately, it's all I have to do with my mana. I could also play this. The problem there is the I can't attack with my Fervent Champion. Whisper Squad still blocks the Rimrock Knight, which is really bad. I actually think it might be this. The opponent will have to get rid of it. Ugh. Not great. I really do want to duplicate the shock with Lutri. It might just get us there. No life gain. Get in over the top. I've got the little devil boy to get another point of damage in. I've got a Rimrock Knight, Rock Knight that can't block. Should I have attacked with it anyway and traded it for the squad? Maybe. It just seems like a bad trade. Opponent's still going face. The endless butcher shenanigans. I mean, take it, right? Life is a resource. Letting them have a card in the graveyard, they just reposition the ghost form. Chump blocking them means I can't be aggressive. I choose dead weight on the Phoenix of Ash. Oh no. And they have Lurus. No. Not like that. Oh, they don't do it. That's kind of whack. They'd rather go after my hand? Do they not know that this is mono red? So they can't gain life. This is basically one damage because they have to take it. So that they're, they're at eight. This is one, two, three, four, five, because it's a knight. It's close. How about Lutri with shock? Does that do anything? I can kill both of these. Then the opponent takes one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not quite there. It's not quite there yet. My friend is here to help your pain. They're probably going to Croxa me, so I'm going to lose a card. So I think I should just have the Lutri on the field. So I think it's this line over the Destroya. I think that's where we needed to be. Letting them have the dead weight back is just too much value. And it gives them a way back into the game. And now they're at three. There's two devils on the field. There's a Tybalt, so they can't gain life. They were really aggressive this game. And now they're going to try to finish it. Can they do it? They're, I don't think so. So they're attacking the Tibble. Okay. Just let that go, right? I was bored anyway. We got it! 
We got to four. We got to four freaking wins. That's an even money dance. Mm. Mm. Even money dance. This is Mono Red Even Money Dance. It's a musical episode. House money. We're, we're competing now for house money. We win this game. We get the house money. Snap it off. Up against Umori. Oh, God. Can we beat Umori? We have to draw Embercleave. Because they're just going to have, like, endless bodies. How do we get through those bodies or around those bodies? They have reach. They always have reach. It's so hard to get the job done. We're going to need something magical to happen. Something that's not that. Uh, we didn't need that. Yeah, we needed not that to happen, but hey, you just got to kill it. Can't mutate onto something that's not there. Crap. <laughs> Epic oops. Um, yeah, let's get the Phoenix going over the top and get the damage in. What else can you do? Hope for the best. Might have Lutri Skewer next turn. We'll see what the opponent plays. Mori. Okay. All right. I've got a bad feeling that what I have to do to win this game is just go way over the top. So I just need to be pumping this and then eventually, like, Lutri Skewer. But should I Lutri Skewer now if that's the play? When I know I have the spectacle? Feels like I should, right? It's mana efficient, too. All right. Get in there. Skewer face. Hope for best. Copy. Base. Still have to have like two turns of pulling this off. And now the opponent gets to do pretty nutty things. But let's find out if it's enough. I can also play the 5-5 uh, five, five Stone Coil. Hope to draw the cleave. 5-5 five, five stone coil carries a big cleave. Does it has reach? Son of a... It has reach, you guys. It has reach. What the heck is going on here? Well, we can force a trade with the Phoenix. Unless, of course, they want to take the damage. All right, big draw coming up. We need a way through this gem razor. There's only one in the deck. It would be a good time for the sword to be lit. Just saying. Opponent is not attacking. We've got them scurred. They are very scurred. Yeah, this is another land. Okay, then. I think I should force this trade now because if they put a Starix on it, it gets it's this thing is already mutated a few times. I feel like I'm supposed to attack without fear. Never let them see me afraid. After that, do I play a 2-2 serpent because they'll only have two bodies and I can potentially go around? Maybe. Also, we don't have enough things in the graveyard. So we might actually want these things in the graveyard. What it because what is it? Exile three other cards. Gotcha. Let's play the castle. Send in the squad. Make the opponent think that the sword is lit in our singleton deck. And no blocks on the phoenix. They're keeping the mutated card. Okay. Well, if that's the play, we pump it. Now we have these in the graveyard if the Phoenix of Ash dies. Play this for two in case we draw the Destroya to mutate onto it. 
Oh, the opponent just blows it up, don't they? That's unfortunate. It's not multicolored yet. <laughs> That's a bad play. That's a bad play. I need them to miss pretty badly. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. They never miss when I'm when I'm battling. Do they? All right, is that last card a, a super mutant? Oh, they're target. No, not that. Ah, the forerunners. They almost had a forerunners there. It's a six six. It has to block the phoenix, and I could top deck a burn spell. Land. What does it hit? What does it hit? Another gem razor. God, that has reach. That's terrible. That's so freaking terrible. All right. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Haste creature is lethal, right? Six, seven, all right. Come on, top decks. Not fine. Um, we're at nine. I can block here and I'm not dead. Reduce the opponent to two. Chump with a Bone Crusher Giant. All right. What is their top deck going to be? Get them to one. Did I really miss this by one damage? Looks like I did. All right, this is it. Do they top deck a mutate card? Oh my God. Well, that's that's my day in a nutshell, but we did get to four wins. Man, I'm sure I blew this somewhere. I'm sure there's some way I could have finagled another damage. All right, lock it in. And let's hit the outro button. Really, there's not a bunch to say other than thank you very much. Please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of these strange companion videos, a little off the beaten meta. Definitely a challenge, and I am I do enjoy the challenge, so I think I should do more of them. The changes to the deck. Don't we don't don't play another Lutri. You can, but don't. Just play Claim. I can't believe I'm not playing Claim, but do play it. We have Heartfire in the deck. And getting the extra damage in can mean a lot, and having the haste in there can mean a lot. And uh, probably run a mobilized district, quite frankly. Because if we're going to run 24 land, because we have to have a higher curve, we may as well run a land that can turn into a creature and punch the opponent in the face. We know we have one legendary creature all the time, so maybe we can play it for cheaper. And may your singleton swords be lit far more than mine were today. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.